Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing episode 101. And uh, if you can hear some like dogs bark and <laughs> kids playing around, we're in the middle of a motocross paddock over uh, right on the west coast. Beautiful scenery. And um, we're joined by Stuart Easton. Welcome to the podcast. How, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. It's uh, it's funny coming back here. The last time I was here was when I was about 11 year old racing myself, and uh, it sort of brings back memories. And Dom's out racing motocross this weekend, and I guess the first thing is you both had a day race. And how did you, how are you both getting on? I was about to say, well, it wasn't said, it wasn't me. Uh, sorry, I was racing, but it was your lad racing, yeah, wasn't it? So how how's yeah. he got on? How has he got on? Good day today, actually. He was uh, he was ninth overall, which uh, doesn't sound much, but it was a good. Um, a good feel today a good 40 bike full lineup um some really good national boys here so he had a good day brilliant yeah, is good. he is he doing is he aiming for the british as um, well as you yeah we did one we've done the first one um the bridgestone one yes i, I. um so that's his pretty much first national really so his first but, one uh, yeah yeah so yeah when did you first swing his leg onto a motorcycle then oh he's rode bikes for since he was a little as soon as he could ride one really but uh he he uh with me racing he never really had the chance to to she was a little bit of a late starter that way yes i um so yeah that was pretty much his first national really so <laughs> he did all right he was good he was getting towards the midfield so battling away yeah, it's good oh, fantastic and f- for those that uh, maybe aren't like uh, up to date and up to speed with the racing and stuff uh, Stuart was a, a top class short circuit racer and also an international road racer and we'll get on all about your career and all the, the highs and the lows but um, we'll, we'll very often talk about the sort of journey to get into racing mm. and um, do you want to just quickly was it a family thing for you early early days or like what was the first steps to yeah well we went full circle now because this is where I started was schoolboy motocross and uh and I've always said that was like the best 10 years of my life was the school by motocross days. I really enjoyed it. Great, great uh, childhood to like to have the opportunity to do it. Um, and so we're here again with my son, full circle. But yeah, that's where it started for me was motocross. And then I, coming from Hoyk, Steve Hislop was the, the local hero. You know, I knew all about the, the, the road racing through following Steve and my dad was a huge TT fan, Steve Hislop, he was into that, he used to go across and watch, still does in fact. Um, so then it went, then we met a, uh, a guy called Paul Bird at a motocross <laughs> race. <laughs> just just a bit of a name drop there, just a, yeah. a, like a bloke down the road. <laughs> Who at the time was, when I was a kid, he was a, a top um, motocross rider himself. He was like Hold a, on, Paul Bird, like yeah, Paul Bird. Yeah, he was a yeah. motocross rider, was he? Yeah, yeah. Right really? now, if he is listening to this, I do apologise, Paul. But when you look <laughs> at his physique, it doesn't exactly <laughs> scream motocross rider, does it? So that's a, actually a bit of a shock there. Yeah, he's actually he was really good, really top, top. Really, yeah. The Grand Prix, British Championship. Um, Jesus. So we, um, he knew him. He, he knew of us from the racing in Cumbria a lot <clears throat> on the motocross scene. Mm. And uh, I was doing pretty good a front runner, and he was just starting to make his road racing team mm-hmm. with John McGuinness, like '96 on a well, he had the 250 team. So Paul Bird stepped in. Sorry, we're, we're going down the Paul Bird route here. Sorry, but uh, so he started off with John McGuinness in '96. I thought yeah. it was a bit further on than I did. Paul no. never go into tarmac himself like no, on the track no, right that's no. interesting he started a, his team when looking back he must have only been quite young mm-hmm. really in 96 paul must have been still in his 20s really and he just thought um, right I, that, that's an incredible mindset just to go yeah. right I'm, go, I'm going from top end like motocrossing to yeah. actually i'm just going to start a team on tarmac yeah. and that I did not know about that. But obviously, if you if you've listened to the show, I know sweet FA to be fair. <laughs> so I, that every time I speak to a guest, it's a nice eye yeah. opener. So you, you bumped into him in a motocross yeah. track, and how did how did that cook? Like, what was the next step from there? I can remember him just saying, "You're you know you're you're quite handy at motocross, and your size and you know stature. Um, have you ever fancied having a go on a, a a road race bike?" And I was like, "Yeah, I have." Following Steve and and that and 
and um, he arranged for me to get a, a, a shot on a bike at Three Sisters. Never. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty that's much where, like motocross. Uh, that's yeah. where the debut was at Three Sisters. And at what uh, age was this then? 15. 15? 15. Yeah. Right. Bloody yeah. hell, straight into the tarmac at 15 yeah. then. There so we go. I was, I was probably, I was running like top five in the, the British 100cc it was at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That long ago. <laughs> and uh, so we went to Three Sisters, had a go on it. Was They said I went all right. But I don't, I don't think I did. But I think Paul just sort of was like, you know, go and do it. And if you can serve your apprenticeship and if you do okay, we'll take Hopefully. it from there. We'll see. Mm -hmm. so, so what what was that? Was that offer was straight off the bat was like, right, come with me. There's a bike provided, tires provided, straight up. I'll tell you what, you must have left a hell of an impression on the motocross to, to have that opportunity because you know yourself yeah. growing up in this both motocross and yeah. the tarmac scene. Those opportunities are, yeah. it's a its a lottery ticket yeah. and you've made the yeah. most of it. My God, mm. that's so, incredible. Yeah, it was it was, that, it was Mark Burr's bike that we borrowed right. for a go on it. Um, so me and my dad took the motocross van. We got Aprilia 125 and did the Aprilia challenge. Mm -hmm. And I, I, like from reading people's books and speaking to people on the show and stuff, there's a lot of top road racers at like uh, tarmac races that when they were growing up that had aspirations to be like sort of in MX1 and racing motocross like supercross and whatever from a was it sort of Steve Hislop that sort of changed that focus from the dirt and that sort of opened your eyes to the road racing side of things I think so I think it was but <clears throat> I think it's probably one of my downfalls is I've never really had a, a good plan and a good <laughs> vision <laughs> I've just kind of winged it. Just kind of done what came up, and Paul Paul suggested it. I was like, "I'll have a shot," and then one thing went to another, and it was never a big master plan. But I never had a big plan through any of it, mm -hmm. which is a probably a. Can you can you remember your dad's reaction to that? Obviously, being a TT tarmac fan his entire life, and then yeah. this opportunity. Can you he, remember his reaction? He never really, he's never really pushed me in any way. Really. You know? From motocross, he was always the dad that just stood there with his arms folded at the side of the track. And True Scotsman. Never, <laughs> if I never, sometimes, rarely, if I never tried or had a stinker of a day, mm -hmm. he'd get a bit, bit hit up. Bit yeah. hit up. But have you inherited that that calm composure? Nah. Are you plug me to dad? <laughs> I'm a moto dad. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I, I no, you said it now. It's, it's yeah. official. Eh? I try. I try my absolute best not to be a bit more passionate than your dad. Aye. Hmm. Yeah. So he's a quick like so with, with your dad and everything like that. That is brilliant. That is the most honest answer we've had yeah. of that motor Because yeah. like sugar tits, uh, Craig, that you know, he's like he gets proper <laughs> high end about that yeah. question. Like, yeah. No motocross dad. Yeah. He's a motocross dad yeah, at yeah. times, but it's uh, no nice to have an honest yeah. answer. It is difficult because you, <laughs> you go through stages. Eh? You're like you like try your best to be calm and just like thumbs up, good job and all that, and, and then it gets sometimes you get sucked in a bit and you get a bit competitive because that's what we are we're racers and you get have you competitive. ever have you ever packed the van early and gone home with your lad once once <laughs> <laughs> yes good man it was good at, man. it was at dunn's a local race yeah. <laughs> good man uh, i do actually you, uh, you must have seen mad mark no the mackenzie's yeah. are doing and I, when i see that i must <laughs> I, I was I was thinking. I wonder if people like uh, sort of dads who have more crossing uh, lads find themselves doing stuff and then thinking, "Oh God, I, I sound like hard mode." I know. You, like, cause you always get you get competitive and you get like the racer and me. Yeah. Start. But you, you can't do it for them. That's the problem. Yeah. You've, it's it a fine to, balance between having that yeah. passion, but yeah, you have to just try and just guide them and. I'm learning. I'm getting there. <laughs> do, you, good, do, you, do you go motocross? Like, since you packed in with the tarmac, uh, when, when did you pack in? 2016. 2016. Did you decide, like, with your lad, he thought, I'll get a motocross bike and go riding with him? Is yeah, that what you're doing that now? Yeah, that was the, pretty much the, the thing with, with me racing. You never really had the chance. He was riding. Yeah. But you never had the chance to, to, to take him racing every week or commit to it. Yeah. Um. So when, when I finished, he... He pretty much started. Oh, yeah. brilliant! Has he it? has he got any dreams to get on the tarmac himself? Is that kind I don't of? No, I think I think that's his problem. He's he's a bit too much like me. He never, he doesn't really <laughs> yeah, have a plan, or he doesn't say 
well, too at, much. But... At, at that age, a lot of it is you've yeah. just kind of got to enjoy it for enjoy what it is. It. And exactly. then if if some if there's uh, opportunities open up later yeah. later on, then it maybe yeah. be a bit more serious. Yeah. But uh, yeah. this is a total random like quite like, and there's no definitive answer to this. But does your like does your son know who who you are and what you've achieved and stuff? He, he'll know the results and stuff. But there's me. I totally fan girl. I dropped my pants when you walked up. I'm like, there's the studio. Oh, great to meet you, Macau Grand Prix lap record holder. And it's like. It's mental. When you grow up, you, your dad's your dad, isn't it? Just his old fat dad, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just his dad. He doesn't really... Do you know who I care? Who, who does he... Sorry. Obviously, you look up to you, but like, who's his hero, even off track? Has he got like an icon that he looks up to? He's he's more motocross. You know, he'll right. be he'll be into the like the motocross guys. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't really... Not bothered for road racing or anything at the minute, but... Yeah. Would you like him yeah. to go down the tarmac? I don't one? think now. I think nowadays, as much as I sort of hate to say it, it's. I think you have to be more wealthy now, don't you? Of course to, you do. I think it's changed a lot since since we did what we did in the late nineties, and it's, things have changed. I think a, a fair bit. Nah, it's maybe a- maybe not, but. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like to get the sponsor, you need to be that corporate image. You need to get up, step it up mm-hmm. all the time, and that just takes more and more yeah. money, and that's the bottom line of it. Yeah. So from that, them early days, uh, the introduction from Paul Bird onto the tarmac was it a continued support for for like n- a number of years from Paul, or was it kind uh, of no, no? Like you said, he he said go and do your apprenticeship. So we did the Aprilia one two five challenge thing, learned the tracks in the first year. And there were some pretty good guys in it in the in the first year. James Ellison was was one, and you know one that stands out. What year was it that you did the Super Teens? Nineteen ninety eight was the first year. So was that around? Uh, did John McGuinness maybe just finish it the year before? Or no, 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 like no, that? no. John was um, in the British two fifties for a long. He was like British two fifties from ninety four. Oh, was he? Um, yeah. So well, so he was. <laughs> I was in the still in the um, the sort of novice junior yeah. challenge thing um but yeah james allison was a name that that i remember at that time oh, uh, any other riders around that you were sort of with in the super teens that then went on a bigger i think james and was kev coglin um, around that time no he's younger kev's a bit younger than a fair bit younger than me <laughs> my favorite thing you're uh, all his competitors at that time yeah. we'll be listening to this going come on what Men- about like mention me steve so. Brogan, uh, yeah steve was a year before Right, oh, so around that he had just of moved on, mm-hmm. Brogy and um, Chris Burns. Yeah, they're all a bit before Cal Harris. They mm-hmm. were all in the '96 time. Right. Okay. I was '98. So, and then 1999, which was a, a quite a good year. Um, I, I was second in the championship. I, my crank snapped at this penultimate meeting, so we, we were kind of looking to possibly win it, and then the the we had a bit of a DNF there, so that that scuppered that one. But Craig Jones was in that year. Chaz Davis and Casey. Casey. No, oh, he was the year, year after. after. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. It's mad when when you're thinking about all the yeah. the names back then. Yeah. And um, when you go to like the British Mini Bikes and you see all the like the little kids winning, yeah. then the some of them will will be going on to like yeah, sort of yeah. Moto GP and World yeah. Superbikes, but it's yeah, uh, yeah it is crazy. Yeah. No. Have you been keeping an eye on the Moto GP? Do, do you follow the BSB still? Do you? Not so much since uh, I used to always follow Cal Crutchlow. You know, I used to always follow follow when when he was doing. It. Not I've watched the highlights of the last couple of races. It's, yeah, but more so BSB. Mm-hmm. I like to watch that. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, as of obviously I'm biased because I'm sort of involved in the panic. But yeah. uh, just in terms of the racing yeah. for me, you, yeah. you know, the, you can't beat BSP. I don't think you can. No, I I t- for a day's race watching, it's it's good. Mm-hmm. All the classes are really good to watch. We normally leave these questions towards the end, but who's your who's your championship favourite then for uh, BSP? Um, it's too open, isn't it? Like, look oh at, god, look, come like, on, come on, give us a name. <laughs> look at last year; there could have been four guys could have won. Jesus, mm-hmm. it was a hell of a you year. Know, went four people went into the last last meeting, so you know, I'd like to see Christian Eden. I'd like to see him have a good year. Yeah, you know, I think he deserves it. He's he's somebody that's worked hard for a long time. He so has, I. A lot of injuries and just setbacks. And mm-hmm. I maybe, thought I thought he had a fabulous year last mega, year. Mega, mm-hmm. mega year. He there. finished. Was it third? Yeah, yeah. Third, and like yeah. Paul's kept him on board for this right. year, so he's no, yeah. he's definitely got a definitely like, got the minerals. He, he deserves it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So after you've done your apprenticeship, what was, um, you know, f- from Super Teens, which is production, was it a 125 still then? Yep. To, yeah. Yep. From a production bike, you know, um, usually people the step is to then go to bsb on the on the like proper gp one mm-hmm. fives uh did is that the step that you took i uh, we did yeah that was when we uh did a deal with paul paul word to ride the 125 honda um it was me and a 125 john mcginnis was on the 250 and james tosland was on the superbike Jesus, for, that's a for, big team for paul yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how did team. how did the season progress um I had a good year for me. Um, started off sort of eighths, sevenths, um, and progressed through the year. And I won the final round and got third in the championship. And how so, did how did John get on that year? Oh, what, uh, what, what was John like on your first meeting of him? Because obviously you and John are really good yeah. friends and you have really good bout and like take the piss yeah. out of each other on Twitter. What, what was your first opinion of John when you first met him? He was just he, he was easy to. To get on with quite easily, you know, it just it doesn't really change for anybody. Ah, you know? some young kid that's just sort of just tagging on his coattails, sort of thing, and <laughs> tagging along. He just kind of welcomes you in, really. Good with advice, John, as well. You know, he's always been one to to give advice. Aye. You know, because t- like, like John's always been like me, being like biased towards the roadside. Yeah. Like, he's definitely one of my heroes. I've always looked yeah. up to. But I've, even going back a little bit further, like. When was the first time you met Steve Hislop, being your like the local hero of Hoyk and like being your icon? You know, when was yeah. the first time you met him? Well, it was. I think I met him when I was a really little kid motocrossing. Aye. And did he, he do motocrossing? No, just he, he had a little bit of, when he was training. He'd ride a bit, a little bit. Right. Did he go down the schoolboy route? I think he did. I think yeah, he did a it, little bit. It's always been that natural progress. Like we uh, were just talking beforehand how it normally be, you start off in the dirt and you, then you go on the tarmac. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. unfortunately, I've done it the other way, as you've seen from my shite riding today. <laughs> so like, I'm changing all my jersey bike colours tomorrow, so you can't see us. I swear to God. There we go. So, but um, but yeah, so we was just practicing. You met him. Uh, I barely remember it, but I'm maybe on like a little sixty, and he was he was uh, practicing on a Honda that he probably got off Honda Britain. And I remember being at a local track and my dad was like, that's Steve Islop. And I was like, I don't know, he's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the dirt bike. I'm going to have uh, him. But... Uh, and, uh, and then never really, because he lived in Isle of Man. Really? Yeah, uh, from like 1989 onwards, didn't he? Right. So I never really... Tax dodging. Never, like really, <laughs> never really met him or knew him. And then in 2001... The following year after that 125 year, Paul quickly moved me up on that 250, which I wanted to stay on the 125, but Paul said, no, we're going to get put you on a 250 straight away. So why did you want to stay on the 125 at that point? Because I wanted to win the Ah, uh, right, because the crank went, yes, I. No, no, no. No, no, no. I was, got my ears mixed up there. This Apologies. is on the British 125 right. GP bike. Mm-hmm. So it was my first year on a proper race bike, and I have managed to get third, and I thought I wanted to stay in it and try and try and win it mm-hmm. but Paul wanted to put me on a 250 and so again it was like a um, a steady start on the 250 because they were quite hard to ride 250s mm-hmm. quite like you never really knew where you were on it there's a bit of a the 125 was quite easy you could kind of just rail it and just it was quite easy that's interesting because like but the 250 was a they were they were they could bite. You have to be on your metal. Uh, and they just, it was like grip, 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 nothing. <laughs> you know, you never got much back off a 250. Was the 250 so. back then, was the 250 the second class? So did you have your main class and then 250? Uh, by that oh, one time, it was probably, it was probably, Super Sport was probably taken over from the 250s because that was the last year of the 250. Right. I ended up scrapping it after that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you can tell you started young on tarmac when you're talking about uh, this year because you don't. You literally, you literally yeah. don't. I caught the end of the two fifties. Yeah. And uh, I finished fourth in the championship, um, but like the top three was XGP guys: Darren Barton, um, Shane Norval, and Coatsy, Adrian Coates. So they're all guys that were like seasoned Con- connoisseurs of 250s. seasoned two fifty guys that had done. And Grand Prix and Euros and all that, so they were, they were a quite a tough school to, 
to try and race with. But come the end of the season, we were, I was getting strong results. Won a, one race, I think, mm. that year. And in hindsight, looking back on, on that decision to jump up to the 250, I, we were speaking the other day, our friend, uh, little Hayden, is on that borderline between a 65 and 85. And he had the sort of opportunity to either challenge for the 65 uh, championship yeah. or step up sort of early, like, the mm. earliest opportunity yeah. go up to an 85 and accept the fact he probably won't be winning but you know he's learning quicker similar to the 125 to 250 jump yeah. in hindsight do you wish you'd you'd stayed on the 125 and sort of challenged for the championship or? maybe but I don't know it's just you whatever can't. whatever <laughs> yeah, comes you know it, as it. Paul Paul made the decision it was his bike mm -hmm. you know so I was lucky just to be able to to ride it um and did, did you then stay in 250s? No. Oh, sorry, it was the last year yeah. of 250s. So then Paul then put me on a super sport bike, which was a 748 Ducati, which was probably Jesus. The, the best bike I've ever ridden. Really? It was an awesome bike. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit long in the tooth at that time, the mm. bike, but the team got the best out of it. Probably, like, the bike was probably like a factory Ducati. Mm -hmm. So was that you the know? love affair for Paul Bird at that point? Was that the first time you got a Ducati out there and you were on it? Is that correct? That, what that? Well, Steve Hislop was my teammate. Of course. He did the Superbike yes. and I did the 250. Yes. And then I went Super Sport, he went Superbike. Got you. And that was the year where Steve won the Superbike and I won Super Sport. Good. My God. Oh, two, so two height guys. Fantastic. That, yeah. is, uh, and not, who, that is outstanding. Yeah. Who were you battling with? Um, it's that long ago. I can't. I'm trying to think. Scott Smart was second. Smarty. Michael Laverty was third. Uh, I think Ben Wilson, maybe. Uh, ben Wilson, yeah. Yeah. Scott, Scott Smart's very involved with World Superbikes now, isn't he? Yeah. As, as it's a director for it's like the, tech, the technical rules. So, yeah. like, sort of balancing out. Uh, we often talk about how they balance, like, the different CCs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of like the, the brains behind for World Superbikes. So, he still uh, has a very influential role in the paddock. And uh, when I was growing up, he was one of my favorite riders, yeah. actually, on this. It was the Hawk uh, Kawasaki back yeah. then. Ah, they but, were beautiful then. Yeah, so, from uh, winning the Super Sport Championship, did, was it straight up to Superbike? No, then we stayed on the same bike for the next year, um, running the number one plate. And <laughs> Mr. Carl Harris came back to Supersport um, from Superbike, riding for Honda, Honda Britain. And he he, he won that year. He was, I never had the, the, the sort of measure of him that year. I won three races, but yeah, I think Carl was pretty convinced and champion that year yeah <laughs> I was second that year I, t I tell you what I've just realised I totally interrupted you about the Steve Islop side of it like when you first met him so you had the when he was on top um, on dirt you said he was just rubbish so when was like the first time you met him like properly well that was what I was going to say Sorry, I went, I did, I I went to Spain you. testing in 01 and we went to the hotel and I flew in with the team and Hizzy made his own arrangements to get there and we were sat in the hotel this restaurant bit and he came in and I was like there's my teammate Steve Hazelot I was like bloody hell it was starstruck yeah yeah it was good, it was good uh, and he was just like totally normal just <laughs> was, in the crowd was Steve uh, was he a good uh, mentor for you really, those really sort good. of days really good I yeah I think he'd done he, he really tried to help me a lot you know just because of from Hoik and and when, when you think if, if anyone's ever been to Hoik or even Google Earth it, it's a tiny place just no. literally off the English board. Yeah. That is a, two yeah. serious talents. Of, yeah. There's something in the water in Hoik. <laughs> and that was the 0-2 oh, who won the two the two titles. Mm -hmm. you know, it was a bit of a fairy tale, really. Mm -hmm. At the time, we never, I never even thought that much of it at the time. But Aye. Some, looking back now, it was a good... A good year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're probably in the perfect position actually to answer this question. Obviously, with uh, phasing out the 250s and the two strokes, and then the sort of super sport class uh, four strokes taking over as the sort of middle class. Um, obviously, you, you ran at the front of both championships. Mm -hmm. do, do you have a particular. Do, are you pleased that it went sort of four stroke and super sport, or do you, do you miss the 250s? Or like, what's your take on it? Um... I don't know. I think, I think, they were, they're both good to ride. To ride. Well, if you get a two fifty, 
and you get the most out of it on the day, it's it's pretty good. You know, they're lovely little bikes. They're, they're, they're race bikes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas super sport bikes are road bikes made into race bikes. Yes, you I... can't beat the the proper race race bikes that are made for the job. You're like, you're like a yeah. perfect size for a 250 yeah. rider as well, aren't you? Was, Did, was there ever an opportunity to go to mo- like MotoGP 250, Grand Prix 250s? Um, there was a couple, but um, nothing that was... I think Paul looked after me and, at that time and, and, and steered me away from it. And I think probably for what we could have maybe went and done, it was it would have been a, it wouldn't have been the best thing for me anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, at the time I was like, oh, Grand Prix, Grand Prix. But I think he knew he had the right decision. You know, because he, he he knew that it wouldn't been it would have been a waste of time. Aye, you know? not without doing like if you don't put a hundred percent effort in, it's not worth doing, is yeah. it? So that, no, you have to totally be on agree. the right the right kit, don't you? He, yeah. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. So, like, so with Steve Hislop being your icon, when did the road situation develop in your mind? So you've gone from schoolboy in the BSB, and you've got so you yeah gone to the BSB, and you stepped it up progressively. Was roads ever in your mind, or no, no, nah, not really? I have watched it, loved it. Like my dad went to the Isle of Man to watch in '98, um, so. I watched it and that, but never really. You never sat on the verge and thought, nah, ah, I need I, to have a go at this. Was that never? I did, I did, but I just just kind of did what came up and never really pushed for anything or just kind of rode what what I could get my hands on, really. Yeah, you know. And uh, but the Macau thing, that was a fu- quite a funny story how that happened. Um, Two thousand and two, teammates to Hizzy, and M- McGuinness was still. I had a good relationship with Paul Bird and and uh, we're all mates and and they were like oh Macau at the end of the year Macau in November and they were like I was like what you get to race your bike in November in the middle of the winter I was like I want to go there can I race it <laughs> never even knew there was no YouTube there was no videos of it nothing so you were totally unaware of what I never Macau- had a clue <laughs> I, I must have been a bit thick and a bit green but I just w- wanted to race in the winter. Were you aware that it was a street? I never knew. You just thought it was like a track with runoff. <laughs> and, and I told Hizzy in that, and he was like, oh, yeah, you'll enjoy that. It's a good holiday. And and McGuinness was saying the same. And so I um, managed to get an entry. Mike Trimby let me in as like a 19-year-old, youngest ever I was about to say, that entry. has to be the youngest yeah. entry. So they've kind of begrudgingly let me in. And... Uh, <laughs> I managed to get there and I, we flew there, got off and then on the boat and everything, got to the the, the ferry terminal where the pits is, mm-hmm. so, right where the pits are. Hold, hold on, so a 19-year-old from Hoyt, where's the furthest you've been up to this point? I bet it was Scarborough. Well, or we, never, we never did any holidays because we were always at motocross meetings up my whole youth. <laughs> so we never did it like any, probably that was my first fl- flight mm-hmm. to Hong Kong <laughs> just a 13 hour flight so off you go <laughs> and uh, and I said to McGuinness I said where's the track he said that's it there and I was like what and in the Armco barriers and they're like the black and yellow barriers and I was like I was laughed I was like no but where's the circuit he said that's it that's the track what was it? Uh, I bet I bet is a hell of a, an education in more ways than what I'm not sure. Are you a married man or a, yeah, yeah, or, he's a man. Yeah. I was going to say I don't think yeah. there's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> we probably can't elaborate much on that. <laughs> but, Nineteen but, year old Shuri Snail, but, but it was like it's that your, so stupid. Was that your first road race? Yeah, Macau. your nineteen. Year old. Yeah, and the same thing. <laughs> the same thing. I spoke to. I oh, spoke to God. Josh Waters. The same thing happened to Josh Waters. He was in Australia, and they were like, he was like, oh, a Grand Prix. I'm getting the chance to race a Grand Prix. He thought it was a, a GP <laughs> Grand Prix. So he went there, and he had the same thing. He got there, and it was like a Armco-lined street race. Uh-huh. Jesus. Talk and- me through your first lap, because I think like, you are 100% right. I have got, I've done it tw- I've done it twice, and I, I had the liberty of YouTube and stuff like, you know, I could watch on boards, Hickman, mm. everyone going around that, you know, I must have spent weeks upon weeks yeah. learning how to, yeah. to be to be blunt, survive the track. So your well, first lap must have been. I was I was young, I was confident, 
I was I was nineteen. <laughs> I just won that British Championship, so I was a bit. Conf- I am I was the man. I confident. So I was like, well, I can be like. Let's have it. I Let's can be like portion. I can be like McGuinness and and Hizzy, I'm a road racer. <laughs> and, what, uh, sorry, sorry, what bike did they put you on for this? The seven four eight. Seven four eight uh, around the was, The super sport race was a race within a race. Then aye. Um, and so off we went. Anyway, old McGuinness gave me some good tips up the top end, all the twisty stuff. He was like, um, slow chicane, fast chicane, slow, slow chicane. Game, yeah. And that's a real. That was a good bit of advice to learn the track. And uh, a couple of sessions, I knew where I was roughly going. And then I remember in qualifying, um, I got a bit cocky and a bit confident. And I seen John Turin, McGuinness was having an in lap. And I was like, I'm going to go, f- absolutely, I'm going to send it into here and show him. Like, I'm, I'm the man. I, I. And uh, I went in and I was like, lost the front, crashed. Which you know, corner? the long left before the hair the tight hairpin <laughs> and a wall of death the barrier and then spun up the road and uh holy uh, shit and john stopped <laughs> and he was like are you all right are you all right and i was like yeah <laughs> embarrassed him and he was like he went you wanker like that and rode off and that was it <laughs> what did the paul say it, like uh, they were a bit they were a bit sort of like edgy I, bet like, well, I had to bend over backwards to get me an entry saying he's a good lad he's safe he's st- he's, that, he's level-headed and then i went and crashed because that that attitude is still to this day yeah. you know what i mean they just they yeah, just yeah. They, they want fast lads but say like you know what i mean you've got to build yeah. them to <laughs> invite only isn't it yeah, <laughs> like because yeah. like, like we were just having a bit of crack about it before like you know the old army humor because he's yeah. like a, he's a mock of lad he's got that dry sense of humor i can imagine him going in going what a dick yeah. just for the crack kind of thing my yeah. dear. And so, how did you get on with in the race? In the then? race, yeah. Well, the race I got, I was, I was racing with Nigel Cap Davis. Remember that guy, the Welshman, big guy, TT racer. I've heard the name. I Nigel, yeah, yeah. Nigel yeah. Cap Davis, and he kept blasting me on the straight, and then I was getting under his feet in the twisty stuff, and then he kept blasting me. I had a right good fun race with <laughs> with Nigel Cap Davis, and I was loving it because he was, he was a TT racer. And I thought I'm racing, I'm battling with road racers. <laughs> My God! So, like, like, let's be honest, right? So you've gone, like, you've got off the, you've got off the boat. You've looked at it and gone, holy shit! Yeah, like, I'm in the deep end. I'm not going home because I don't want to be called the soft shite. That's <laughs> that'll be the mentality. But at any point, did you think, like, you know, I don't want to do this, or was it I really want to do all of this now? You know, like yeah. the whole scene. Was no, like, I never, I never thought really. You are the most yeah. laid back for, yeah. I've ever met. You're like, yeah, I never yeah, thought. But I've, I, I did the super sport thing. Cameron Donald was on a super sport bike as well. At, at the Macau? Yeah. Right. Cam was on a Yamaha and uh, he was on for some Chinese team. So right. to be fair to him, his bike was a bit shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I managed, I beat Cam, beat Cam for the super sport yeah. win. And... So I got a big, big trophy and super sport win, blah, blah, blah. First blah, time blah. there, 19 yeah. year old, everything. Yeah. And obviously, Macau uh, became a, you know, a very regular, yeah, a regular me, and that, yeah. and a very successful yeah. place for yourself. Yeah. How many years did you end up uh, going for? Oh, oh, I think I missed two or three over the years with injuries and whatever else, but ma- mainly injuries. Mm-hmm. And what's, what's yeah. your sort of stats at Macau? Like, uh, you... I can remember I got... I went back that following year, oh three, and that was my superbike debut. Was in Macau, first ever superbike race, was in Macau Shut up, as man. well. Yeah, yeah. But you like so, you like jumping in the deep end, <laughs> son, don't you? You know what I mean. That yeah. So debuted the uh, a, a no track, no 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 track. Like, did you have any tests? Nope. And, Straight. Ahead. Who the who came up with that idea? That is <laughs> mid mate. You were like. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I did all right. I did okay because it's the kind of track where it's not like a BSB race, so it was quite a good place to. Just <laughs> it's a sensible place to go learn a super bike. To yeah. get a weekend on one, mm-hmm. and uh, finished fifth in the race. You're yeah. joking. Yeah, got fifth, and <laughs> then I went back in '04, and I, I, I got third, podium, where Rutter won it, Michael won, and John was second, and then me. My God, but I was. Amazing. That was the year, 04, when I, I felt out of my depth. 
I was just a bit, uh, I was trying to keep up with John and Michael and they were kind of seasoned superbike kind of. Ah, it's the, like road racers. Yeah. Like, ah, right, yeah. that's and interesting. I was just kind of puffing and panting a little bit out of my depth. Bloody hell. Felt, so, like, felt, yeah, when, a little bit sketchy. When did you first uh, win at Macau come? Uh, 08. Yeah. When did you set the lap record that yeah. still holds today? 2010. 2010. Now, now we were having a little bit of crack outside and stuff like that. And I remember flicking on the telly and I can't remember what year it was, but you're on the poor bird Kawasaki. And I remember sitting there with my father late on at night. And I think it got to like lap four or five or something like that. And my dad just got up and went, well, he's won that. I'm off to bed. And he, it, the race hasn't finished at this point. Huge mega laps. And the gap just went from there to there to, and it just got yeah. bigger and bigger. And it was, mate, like every other racer will agree with me when I say this. You, it was it was embarrassing for everyone else. You mate, you just it was outstanding that race. Yeah, it, that that was twenty fourteen. Fourteen, right? And I I think that year I was seventh in BSB. So, you know, it was a I missed the showdown. I was I was seventh overall. Yeah. And it was I was riding pretty decent. Yes. So we took the BSB bike there, you know, and it makes a difference that doesn't it if you've rode. BSB to to seventh ish that kind of area and and then to go there you kind of you pick up the ball pretty easy there. Mm -hmm. Bloody hell! Um, and it was my bike. A lot of guys go there on different bikes, don't they? And mm -hmm. so I went with my bike and 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 just uh, it felt nice. You see, I ju uh, sorry, Chrissy, I just joined Twitter at that point, and one of my favourite tweets was McGuinness, and you were absolutely spacking off your face on drink and you got the trophy in your arms and McGuinness is tucking you in it was like King of Macau and it <laughs> stuck in my head that was like one of the first tweets uh, I've ever seen I just thought that, that's that's what it's about uh, that's what you're going to do I put some big drinks over there <laughs> yeah. Yeah. do you know um, do you know in 2008 when you, for your first win what bike was that on? Um, that was Sean Muir's um, Honda oh, it was a uh, Doosan sponsored bike Right. Orange bike, Deuce and Diggers. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's it. I was Sean, trying to remember why. Sean got a one-off thing for for Macau, and mm -hmm. uh, Guy Martin was my teammate. How, um, how did you find Guy as a team? Well, it's just Guy's guy, isn't he? He's just, <laughs> just like he, he's all right. He's good. Just never really you can't shut him up, can you? But <laughs> <laughs> he was just, just Guy rabbiting just, on, right? just straight yeah. up Guy. Yeah. So. So you've done the Macau, you've done debut Superbike Rally there. You, you have, like, wow, you've got the lap record and everything like that. So when did that transition think, well, let's go do the Northwest then? When, when did, how did that come about for you? Uh, so Macau was 02 the first year, mm. and then 04 I went to the Northwest. Right. And my first year there was a, a shambles. I had a, a big tire delamination. I was like one of the only guys on... on uh, Dunlops and it, it was really a, a full delamination yeah Jesus yeah. Where, whereabouts on the circuit was that then uh, into Metropole shut up man yeah. yeah as soon as it hit the bumpy bit it just 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 came off the Jesus the wet yeah <laughs> how fast was, roughly how fast oh, I don't know what got to be 180 isn't it there? it's got to be full, yeah. like you're talking full stretch yeah. cables and there did you just go straight down the road rather yeah. than yeah just lucky a, not to bounce off just a load of Big flapping at the back. <laughs> is this? It, I, I distinctly remember um, we're both sponsored by the North Yorkshire Road Racing Supporters Club, and that's where me and Dom actually met. Mm -hmm. And I remember you coming years ago, and it's one of my favourite stories ever at the club. I remember, it, like, I still remember it to this day, laughing about He's it. He's getting is nervous. This, He's like, "What no, did no, I say?" Is, <laughs> is this the is this the crash where Norman was stood? For, uh, Norman Burgess was stood over. No, that was that was years later. That was that was that big crash in 11, 2011. Yeah. So you've had two big ones at the northwest. No, I never crashed that that tire thing. Bloody hell. That managed to get through that. So you've had one like um have you only had one big road race crash in? Or mm -hmm. and that, that was one. it. So yeah. talk us through it then. Go on. Um <laughs> just just a bad wrong place, wrong time thing. And uh, it was Thursday practice and there was me, uh Gary Mason, who was a newcomer, my teammate. Mm. Um and uh, the two Ducatis, Michael Rutter and Martin Jessup, and so they all took off. And I've always been one just to kind of just cruise away. It's practice. You've got you've got all you've all, got all week, aye, all night and stuff. And I just sort of cruised away behind them. And 
and uh, I, I, I nearly passed Gary into York and I thought there's no point stressing I'll just slipstream him on the, the big straight yeah got through Mill Road and I was slipstreaming him and uh, up through past the filling station and he had some kind of bike cut out or something the bike just stopped and I I was like whoa and just just clipped him at the, at the back and went like I don't remember mm. anything after that was this Jesus like a, a similar sort of speed to the other one like sort of but I think retired. no I think it was like fourth ready for fifth Probably 140, 150. Was this MS? We on the MSS? That before yeah. Sta- that's yeah. before Station. No. Yeah, yeah, before Station. Before, before Station. Station now, now Station yeah. is fully, even on a super bike, you just... Yeah. Well, it was a bit further. It was... Bit back coming back, just before it drops down I, the hill again. That is yeah. just... I don't know. Mm. That's still howling on that mind. So it's just a lot of luck involved. Aye. A lot of luck. I mean, I, I broke, shattered my pelvis. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Broke my femurs. Um, Both of them. Mm. You still got any metal work? Was it metal still work? Still got a rod in my femur. Jesus, one, wept. One, and screws in the pelvis. Um, <laughs> Giving you much bother now, like, or? A little bit achy. I bet it is so nice. <laughs> um, and then I ruptured my bowel, and then and loads of internal bleeding, and, and like that was a big. big deal. T- tell Dom the, the Norman bit. Ah, so, come on, how are you? Ah. So for anybody that knows Norman, he's a joker. Do you, do you know Norman from Silk Lee? I don't actually. He's like, he's Paul's left hand, Aye. right hand man, and he's Aye. always like, goes in his helicopter and stuff with him, and they're like, Aye. best mate. They get, get on the source together. See, so he, he's marshalling um, at, at the Mill Road, red flagged because of me. I'm lying in the road, and I, I can remember bits, patchy bits, and I remember lying in the road, and Norman lifted my visor up, <laughs> and he says, Oh, it's you. And I was like, What? I was like, Norman. Like a bit delirious, like what the hell? Why is Norman here? Aye. And uh, I knew I was in a bad way. I knew I had a big crash, and and uh, and it, it goes back to when Hutchie had his crash, and he said, "If you're ever in, a, if you're ever smashed to bits," he says he was when he smashed his leg up. He says I was screaming for morphine, and he said, um, "The the the medic guy said I'll give you something better than that," and he gave him special K which is ketamine. <laughs> but the medics call it Special K. Shut up, man. So he says, oh, so he got Special K. And he says, if you're ever, if you're ever smashed to bits, ask for Special K. That's the stuff. <laughs> so it must have went into my brain. And I'm lying in the road, <laughs> smashed to bits. And I was like, Norman, Norman, Special K. Get Special K. And he was like, what? I was like, get Special K. And then... The guy on the bike came, the the, 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 med- medic the real medic came, <laughs> and Norman said, I think he's a bit delirious. He wants cereal. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, fucking hell, Norman. Do you want full fat milk um, or semi skin? I, I, was, I was, I can barely remember it, but I'm screaming. Special case, special case, special case. And he's trying to, try to keep his calm and he says I'm going to go across to that house and get you some cereal all right <laughs> try, to, try to keep his calm <laughs> oh, yeah. that's so funny bloody hell and, uh, man. and then the next thing you if just, we ever get you on a return the, guest you know what's going to appear the, don't you there you go <laughs> then my leathers got cut open and injected special key <laughs> that was it I woke up in Belfast hospital three days later <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Jesus that, that must have been the biggest injury you've ever had is yeah. it biggest yeah. crash oh, did, yeah. it, did it leave a sour you know taste in your mouth thing of fuck road racing or was no, it no it's just an incident that yeah. you can't blame anybody I, it, I've always said like it's probably my old mate John McGuinness says if you race bikes long enough a throttle's gonna stick a brake's gonna fail it's mechanical things it's, it's a motor it's a bike isn't it mm-hmm. yes I things it's sad isn't it but so things happen, don't they? Yeah. If you play with fire, cause and that's like for, for me, it's part of that you know you, you don't wish it. No, you know what I mean. You really, yeah. really don't want that. No rider, no, no. Fan, nothing. No, but everybody part, does their best to avoid, avoid it. it. I hundred percent agree. But sometimes, sometimes it happens. But that little bit of part for me, I'm speaking me. I don't want to drag anyone else in, but it's that little bit of buzz about the whole motorcycling 
period you know it's dangerous it's yeah. adrenalizing anything could happen and it's you know it's part part of, for me yeah. it's part of it, it is so. it is it's horrible to say like i just thought what i've just said there and it's like oh, no 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 it's right though no 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 <laughs> it's it's not horrible that's it is fact part yeah. of the game isn't it you know it's i think mechanicals from, happen mechanicals happen i think for a lot of people and just life in general you you might look at someone say jumping off you no know, those things where you jump off Aye. the top of cliffs with the suits yeah. on and you're skimming the it, you're skimming the, the uh, rocks some people just do not get that at all and think why on earth would you do that mm. but uh, there's some people in life like to be, to get as close as they possibly can to mm. death and then just pull away at the last minute mm. and it's the kick that they get from that mm. and in some respects I think that's an attribute that a lot of bike yeah. races and especially road races is. probably thrive off yeah, yeah. Um, and it's 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 one of those things like why yeah. why would you possibly want to race bikes if you can just yeah. sit and be safe all your life but that's well, not that's well, kind of not what life's about is it? <laughs> it, I always say that story the year before and I finished second in the this feature race Alistair Seeley won he, he beat me at the, like church corner last lap he, and he was, he was great on the coast road mm -hmm. Alistair he was he beat me and that was that but Aye. anyway got a nice second place and uh, got my start money prize money checks for all the races which you go and collect at the Porter Cabin off, off to the anchor bar, <laughs> that, that, big that's, knees up, ah, it's big mean. knees up. And then I was driving my hire car along the the circuit the next day to the airport. And I'm driving along, I'm thinking, got my checks in my pocket, great night with your mates. Like you're, you're driving on that road at 60, mm -hmm. and you're like, we've done 205 on this yesterday. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. It was like, that's a, a good feeling for, that's what, what we do it for. Definitely. And then, that was the biggest buzz ever, and then a year later, you're you're on the other side of the the, the, the coin, aren't you? Yeah. Do you Ma miss massive it? highs and massive lows, isn't yeah. it? It's, yeah. Yeah. Do you miss it? I don't. No, nah, I never. I never miss it. But I raced. I raced for when I was five, till thirty three. So, I think I had my my fill. Mm -hmm. Kind of tick the boxes, and uh, yeah. And at the end, when I was in BSB, I was. You know, you're looking at the bike and you're trying this, and trying that. And you, I think it's, at the end you have to look at yourself a bit. You know, mm -hmm. just it's it's interesting because you, you know you, we, we were talking about talent, like you know, naturally talent, hard work, and people and everything like that. But it's like mad when you think Michael Rutter and John McGuinness. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Rutter's nearly fourteen. Is he? He's forty nine now, isn't he? Forty nine, mm -hmm. and like what? And what we mean, like it was only a couple of years ago he was battling at the front of stock thousand. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That was right, and it, it's mm -hmm. it's surreal, isn't it? And it's like, like you say, I think it's important mm -hmm. that people know. It's like when you know you want to stop, that that's yeah. the time to stop, and that that's right. You do get the odd freak like them, don't you? But... <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your record around the northwest site like, in terms of wins and podiums and um, things like that? Oh, not that good. Not that. I never did many years, and right. um, I finished fourth on a six hundred once, second on a superbike. I think a fifth or something here and there mm -hmm. but i always i never I always went unprepared i always went with like one bike mm. um like super sport only or super bike only yeah and then all the guys that have got full stable of bikes L track time track doing, time doing all the races and everything you know i maybe do the first race and then sit up sit the whole day in the anchor <laughs> waiting for the <laughs> waiting for the feature race yeah uh, and you know they're coming off their yeah, track shot, it's bike. still track time in it. Yeah. Now, uh, what's what, a lot of people that we speak to are happy doing the northwest or northwest in Macau, and but mm -hmm. don't take that step to the to the TT. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I presume you'll have been had plenty of offers over the years to do the the TT. Did you? What? Well, I never really, I never really got like any offers, but it's kind of place like nobody really wants to take a newcomer, do they? Mm -hmm. Because you know, you got to go and kind of learn it, haven't you? And, and do your apprenticeship again? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I would a... say. Um, did you ever come close? I did. I did come close, and I think it was like oh eight. Um, spoke to Paul Phillips, and it was like pretty. I was showing a lot of interest, and 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 he was too, and and then at the end of oh eight, I got that Macau ride with Sean Muir, and I won Macau and. And then he put me on the bike for the following year. And then we had a great year. You know, it was just like one of them. Um, 
it, everything just worked good. The team was mega. The bike was good, and like everything worked really well. And ended up having my best BSB year ever that year. Um, and then it kind of just steered me away again mm -hmm. towards BSB. Yeah, you know, just kind of. You got the drive back, got the focus back on mm -hmm. one task. Because that yeah. the, all these stories have the same thing. You're like one task at a time, and you've got to respect that. If you yeah. know what I mean, so you focus on one thing and yeah. one thing only, and it's a, that's a good attitude. Obviously, we've uh, spoke about Macau quite a lot, but um, just before we move on, is, is do you have any uh, suitable Macau stories that sort of spring to mind that you can? <laughs> oh, I think uh, every year we always used to have a um, like a a thing where the car racers and the um, bike racers and that they do that thing, don't they? Like a PR thing. Aye. And it always ended up in a, like the bike racers being a bunch of clowns. And, I totally. <laughs> uh, like, just, I can't remember what. They split the hotels what, now, yeah. you know. You know, I used to oh, share right. hotels. Oh, no, like we we, we stay at the Harbour View when they stay at like another one. Yeah. That we don't, we're not even allowed to mix anymore, man. Always, Hutchie, the, Hutchie was always the troublemaker. Really? He's the, like Jekyll and Hyde, Hutchie. He's probably a Shut bit. Shut up, man. He's probably got serious, more serious and mature <laughs> as the years have went on but then like 06 or 7 or 08 and that he was he was wild with a drink really I had that's that, that's just a bit of a shock because the thing is on the telly and stuff oh, it's he's just that quiet hello like i'm hutchy and everything he's like, like a mouse when, I... he's, when he's on the the tv but get him really tanked up with doing, <laughs> like mcginnis winding him up and that's good to hear and that, that is and good to hear I remember we were in a nightclub and there was a, like a Dutch F3 racer with a long hair and that and these fancy bottoms and and he thought he was the bee's knees and and he had his his girlfriend on his arm and that and Hutchie was like, look at that car racing wanker. <laughs> <laughs> and he went up behind him with his little fancy bottoms and he just whipped them down. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was furious. I thought he was going. I thought he was going to chin him. Oh, that uh, would have been meant to see that. Things like that. Because uh, how old? How old is Hutchie now? That, that's an interesting. Um, you know when you're talking about there's like that odd exception, like the Rutter and McGuinness kind of thing. But Hutchie, how old is Hutchie? I think he's just forty. Just forty. Mm. There you are, it's man. Because what? Mm. What are Hutchie's plans? Do you know? It hasn't been announced yet. I, I do yeah. know what he's doing, but it's yeah. yeah leave yeah. that for him to announce. <laughs> but he's back. On, he's back on a bike though next yeah. year. That's good because yeah. people yeah. don't know what they're doing, do they? So, yeah. and is John? Is John definitely on for Bournemouth next well, year? To do what though? No, well, no, I'm just yeah. It's so is that con there. contract? Because like, everyone's just gone quiet, haven't mm. they, with the whole COVID thing? So, mm. how 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 did your COVID go? Your uh, lockdown situation. Have well, you set up any businesses? No, know? well, I've always been um, hands on at, at, with the car garage. Me and my dad. All oh, right. Uh, yeah, my dad's had the car garage for forever ah, know, since I was since I was like a nipper. But um, so I've always, you know, been there. Yeah. Some some, type, some years less than others. <laughs> Depending on how racing's going. <laughs> Come back from the Northwest with your Northwest Trek right. start. <laughs> I'm off for yeah. six weeks. I bet you never said anything about the Trek. Did you get paid? So, no, nah, no, nah, they've kept the money like, they've kept the money. <laughs> but he's never really liked it. He's never really liked it if I've been, you know, he never liked me to be idle. You know, hmm. not. Oh, yeah, God, he, I. He's, a, he's, a, he's an old, he's a grafter, eh? he's old school, so. That's mint. He likes me to, to keep. I've often, I never had the balls to do it, but whenever I won a BSB race, and then on the Monday morning when I'm like, dropping the oil out of a Ford Focus or something like that. I've always wanted to take a picture and tweet it, but I never had the balls to do it. <laughs> <laughs> to do it. I thought I'd make myself look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, that would have Back been to reality. Yeah. Back to reality. Yeah. It is a bit of a, an odd, I mean, it, like for you, the, going to the TT, Macau and things like that, and even just racing, you know, BSB and Superstock, you do go from, you know, doing something so like, fast and adrenaline and there's loads of fans there and especially mm -hmm. the, for the likes of yourself where you know being like say winning bsb mm -hmm. racing you're, you're a hero in front of like you know 50 60 000 fans like thousands of people watching on tv loads of people screaming for your autograph and then half like nine o'clock the next morning you're on your hands and it, it is yeah. it's like a parallel universe yeah, isn't it yeah, yeah, which yeah. doesn't sort of happen in yeah. lots of other sports no. but um sorry i just wanted to quickly ask when you're going through your career obviously paul bird got you onto the tarmac and then you went all the way through to superbike uh wh what was the what was the story like how did you part ways um probably probably me being 
thinking I knew better. You know, I probably like I rode for Paul for one two five two fifty super sport super sport again, and then we stayed on the um, the super bike for the sec super sport bike for that second year, and I was itching to ride a super bike, mm-hmm. and Paul was like, "No, there's a new Ducati seven four nine coming. I want you to ride it," and he offered me a a really nice deal, you know, a good good little package and. And I was like, I want to be on super bikes. I want to ride a super bike. And I was like, twenty two, and I was like it, itching to be desperate to be on a super bike. And I said, I've done. I've been first. I've been second in super sport. I was like, if I stay in it, what what we're gonna what we're gonna achieve? And he was like, trust me, trust me. You need to be stay super sport. You're not ready yet. And then I thought I knew better. Got a super bike offer of ETI Ducati, you know, and, and I thought, I saw that I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> thought I knew what, what was, what was playing that. And sure. then when I left Paul's team, I think it was the first time I'd ever rode for another team. They were a little bit more pressure. You know what I mean? Not that there wasn't pressure in Paul's team because Paul's a, he's, he's a grafter. Aye. He's a winner. Do you know what I mean? So, aye. but it's just different, just a different, You've left that homely feel that mm. you've grown up with, and yeah. you, the guy that, the guy that I knew that I was since I was a like, I, I, kid, I. and that, and so then I put myself in this position, and I did actually briefly did good, qualified fifth at Silverstone in '04, and I was like, "Whoa, this is easy." I thought this is this is like put a qualifier in, and when I put a qualifier in the 998 Ducati, it just felt like a super sport bike. We're, that went faster mm-hmm. Aye. and I just like did my thing and I was like fifth in, on the grid with like Kagayama, John Reynolds, Sean Emmett, like all these older, Rock stars, older guys like, like and I was like this is easy I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna what? be like winning this before Aye. before long <laughs> just stepping on confidence yeah I just like don't know what I was thinking so I got think I got an 11th in the race one, it was a bit wet, and then I got 7th in race two, so 7th in the points, and I thought, I, I, can, I, can, I can smash this. Went to Brands Indy and put another qualifier in, I was like, I, lo- I love these qualifiers, it makes the bike feel like a super sport bike, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Just like, it threw bottom bend, gave it a 0-100% on the, on the qualifier. And it just went woof, high-sided, like massive high-side, and landed on my arm. Oh! And, and the bike came on top and dragged it up the road, and I got a big old skin graft on there. So my arm was bad. Mm-hmm. It's like pop a chunk out of the uh, job. Big skin graft. Now, it, it, did you say ETI Ducati? Mm-hmm. Is it was I, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, is, who is it? That's a long time ago now. It, um, Alistair Flanagan was the. The guy's name, Electrack Installation, was the the team. So it was a sort of millionaire guy that set his team up. Mm-hmm. And it would have been a happy bunny that you flew no, <laughs> and burnt no, your arm off and then wrote off his bike. Nah, nah. So that was like a introduction to super bikes, what they're really like, and and uh, I was like, oh, that kind of knocked me a bit. And that was my first real knock mm-hmm. ever, really, first injury. Right at that point, got oh, yeah. ever since then I got loads. <laughs> <laughs> you got the got the ball yeah. rolling, and then uh, oh, oh, yeah. like go through your career. So from the ETI Ducati, it was that in 04, did you say? Uh-huh. And then 05. So 04, I never lasted the the season uh, with them. Mm-hmm. That that kind of just fizzled away. Aye. Um, and um, John Hackett from Ducati Coventry, he. Uh, John John's a Ducati sort of legend, isn't he? Mm-hmm. J JHP tune in, um, Ducati dealership and everything, yeah. and been in racing for for a long time. And um, I knew his son Rick from Super Teens. Rick Hackett was in Super Teens, and and John threw me a lifeline to go back on a super sport bike. So confidence was like on the floor, big struggle and. I think I had a couple of dismal rounds back on the super sport bike and then 
chipped away and chipped away and I got like one podium at the end. And then for the following year, um, for 06, um, Martin Jessup's dad, Phil, um, amalgamated riders, JHP. Mm. So it was like Martin, Jessup and me um, for the next year. Yeah. And then another bad decision on my part. Um, uh, I think I was second in the points. I think I won the first round, <laughs> leading leading early doors. I was second in the points, um, and I got a, a a call from an Italian team to do the World Supersport round at Monza. Um, was that ever on the radar? Like doing the worlds at that point? Not not. <laughs> Never, I never thought again. No, just, never thought. Just it was there. I, I always fancied it, but it was never an option. It was never really a. Yeah, you know, but that's a huge never, deal because people would. Uh, f- yeah. I, would I would chop off my left leg to have that opportunity. You yeah. know, inside that. Thing. So it was actually Josh Brooks's ride, and Josh parted ways with this Italian team. Yeah. So the Stefano Caracci, um, gave us a call. He was like Monza, if you fancy it, and I was like, yeah, 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 I'll do it. I'll ride it. Well. Thankfully, John and Phil let me go and do it. Uh, it was just knowing, knowing what you, I know now, looking back, it was it was a silly, stupid thing. If I knew now what I know, if I knew then what I know now, I should have done Monza and then came out. Because the bike was a missile in a straight line, but it was a it was a bit of a pig. In Otherwise, yeah, right. bit of a pig. Monza was all straights. So I went there, never knew where I was going, qualified like 19th and got up to fifth in the race. <laughs> That's a hell of a jump. Finished fifth, but I don't think I'd be speaking out of turn. Like World Supersport then mm. was fucking fast, like, uh, real like, fast, really deep, <laughs> deep, deep, deep. Like, um, and to work all the way from 19th up to fifth is, yeah. is saying something. It was a strong result. It caused a bit of a stir. You know, it was like, it was, a, it was a good... It was a good one, and I should have left it at that. Came back to Britain, and then I'd I'd, I'd showcased myself to the the world guys. Then I just came in top five. To end up upset some people go home. Yeah. High. And then they were like, "Oh, next round, next round." So I went to the next one, and then normal tracks, and it was like it was. It was back nothing, to the it, pig. It was nothing like it was. You know, and I think I got, I did the two championships together for the rest of the year. And I think I got like I think I got top ten at Assen, tenth there in the rain. I got an eleventh at Lausitz Ring, a couple of fourteenths, and that was it. And I know you, yeah. incredibly modest so, playing those results down, but as you said, as you alluded to, World Super Sport back then, especially, was like unbelievably competitive. Yeah. So you know, to be in the points yeah. at all those tracks on a yeah. hellish on, on a pig of a bike. If well. I'd left it at the fifth, yeah, <laughs> as well as. It might have just mm-hmm. is is that Stef- Stefano? Is that the Italian guy that works with Tommy Bridewell now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I've I worked with him for one round uh, a few years ago, and um, yeah, I think that Josh Brooks. Did you listen to the Josh Brooks podcast when no. he was on here? I'm sure there's a there was a good story to do with um, like a. T- a team changing and somebody like taking the keys for the can you remember that taking the keys for the truck and i can't remember if it was that team or not but um yeah so from from that that year in uh super doom bowl championships would stay in super sport again or? stayed in super sport and there was not a lot going on really only bike that was that was available was um uh kawasaki or nick morgan and now uh, nick's been nick's been another guy in my career who's who's actually been there quite a few times mm. you know he's been been good to me and and uh i really like the guy you know he's he's uh he's often in the years ago he was often maybe struggled for budget you mm-hmm. know but the team were a hell of a solid unit good unit you know and uh and the bikes were or uh, as good as it could be. Yeah, Dude, you know? bike racing is an extremely small community, yeah. and obviously, um, I was due to ride for Nick last year, mm-hmm. like before the whole COVID situation. And obviously, you, 
with it being a small community, you speak to a few people and you know straight away, yeah. you know, if, yeah. if, if, if soon as people like say, don't pay bills or have any sort of problems, yeah. the whole paddock knows yeah, about yeah, it straight away. Yeah. And um, when I was due to ride for Nick, every single person I yeah. spoke to was just, yeah. just totally sung his praises. Everyone that had ridden for him, uh, Michael Rutter was mm. properly praising yeah. him. And think, um, well, that speaks a lot for it. It's, it's, uh, it's very rare in a, um, any walk of life. Yeah. I think what I mean is like, he he did a lot on the budget he had. Yes, you know. Mm -hmm. I think he had. He'd probably be. He'd probably be. He'd like that because he did. He had next to a fraction of what the, you know, them them days the airwaves guys and the Honda. Mm -hmm. Honda was like factory <laughs> Japanese, Honda. Japanese oh, yeah. in them days. Was. Am I right in saying the Kawasaki wasn't the sort of force that it is today back then as well? Um, I'm not I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure, but... Um, in terms of the manufacturer, like, you know, now it's uh, kind of dominating world. The, 11, the 2011 bike was the game changer. Mm -hmm. Before that, mm. I don't think they were that... Mm, they were there that, or thereabouts, yeah, but not, good. not, not good, uh, competitive but, enough yeah. to win races. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, what year were up to now? Oh uh, seven that was. Seven. And the, the six hundred that year was a new model develop in development, and it was it was a slow start to the year due to that. And then I went to um, Kawasaki France for an endurance gig. Got the call up for that, and in them days it was like to do a world endurance round. I was getting like three grand. Three, I was like, three grand. I'm going <laughs> for one race. So I went off to test it, and there was like six riders, I think, and there was an A team and a B team, and we're all kind of testing. And you have to, you have to kind of push on because you want to be in the the A team. Aye. Aye. And I think I can't remember what it was. It was maybe more money or something if you go into the A team. The damn pride uh, of it. <laughs> and, uh, and it was raining, and uh, I was going. Quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. Never had a slide. Quicker and quicker. Oh, and then <laughs> the one slide that you have oh, <laughs> went high sided um, and and landed on my feet and broke my heel. Oh. And that was a bit bad injury as well. It was, oh. it was uh, three months. Three months with that one. And you're still doing transit sums in the carriage <laughs> with a broken heel. Get on with it. Um, so that was a. That was a low point, aye. Because, because then I'd had like quite a few years. I was just like, you know, looking back at the kind of O two sort of burst onto the scene a little bit. Yeah. You know, and then and then O four or five or six or seven was pretty not mega. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. bit here and there. Yes, aye. Bit patchy. A patchy. I agree um, with you. And then. So Nick moved to Superbikes for the 08. Um and and he he put a nice little bike together, which is like a kit bike. But it just seemed to it, it rode pretty easily. You, know, you could you could ride the thing pretty good. You know, it's just a just a pretty modest bike, but it was like a nice good package and the team and everything, it all worked pretty good and and we had a couple of top fives here and there and top eights battling away um, and then what happened that year I got another a broken wrist broke a wrist that year so it was another setback and it just seemed to be like injury after injury after knock back and just, ah. just pretty pretty tough eh? um, and then but I had been going alright and Sean Muir had sort of been keeping an eye on the the job and he was looking for a a number two rider um, that you could pick up, and I kind of fitted the bill because I would I was begging him to ride the bike, <laughs> pleading for them to stick stickers on it, and we went to Macau. Still no deal done. I went to Macau and I managed to win Aye. that race, and the bike was really nice little bike. Is that when you smashed the lap record? No, that was in a couple of years after. Oh, sorry, that was, was your first. Eight. Yeah, Aye. your first win. Yeah. And uh, and Sean was like, you know, and I was begging him. I was like, look, I had 
you know a couple of top fives and this and that i was like on that bike i can do i can do i can do all right and and uh he's already signed carl harris and i was like just get me on the, the second bike you know and it went right through to like new year you know still were not not kind of done and then eventually hit the 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 sort of green light and and uh and paul bird stepped up and and sponsored me personally sponsored me oh brilliant you know so so i had i had kind of paul um on board backing me mm -hmm. and then on this on this honda it was a good bike and uh straight up like podium that round one straight away it's good uh, do you still keep in touch with paul and stuff like that yeah a little bit good, a little good. Bit. not not a lot but i don't no i don't really keep in touch with that oh many. god wait that's it you've yeah. got you've, you've all got your own lives haven't right. you and you just get on with your own thing it's, it's just like it's, it's nice that paul's stayed like so loyal to you it certainly mm. speaks massive volumes the fact he, he sponsored you especially riding for another team he yeah. must he must uh, um have thought a hell of a lot of you as a person right. to do that yeah it's a big compliment so, in itself it's a, that's he, a hell of a compliment isn't it so so you, that people come uh, go. so that oh nine year was was great what a fun year that was it was just i never actually finished lower than fourth in a race wow that year I had a couple of dnfs and then we got third in the points. Uh, Camier won it, and Ellison was second. Mm. And back then as well, uh, that was on the Airways, Airways bikes where uh, they were to. Yeah, where their them bikes yeah. as well were. I know they had their struggles with their their budget. Yeah, and their the bikes coming late and all that. But once they got them running, they were factory bikes. Yeah, and mm. I was like the the first of the the sort of best of the rest yeah. that year. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And uh, and uh, therefore, did you stay with Sean for another year? Yep, that was a Swan year, uh, ten. But um, I never really got on with the bike as much in the second year. The the first year in '09, they had um, the bike with the electronics they had, and they had like an air bleed system for the corner entry, like a this air bleed thing they used to have. And uh, Pete Jennings had the thing. Nice, I liked it just really liked the bike it backed in a little bit and it just i just got a real good feeling from with it. it yeah and it was consistent and then for the following year they went to different electronics and it was like almost like pushing into the corner a lot and i never it was inconsistent that that electronics thing and it was it was it was one minute it'd back in and next minute it'd push and I never ever got that right mm -hmm. you know i never felt as comfortable and i won meeting i did win a race next minute i'd, I'd struggle mm -hmm. and then maybe podium struggle really mm -hmm. inconsistent what was a uh, sean Muir like as a boss good really good i i, I like i like sean never i never really keep in touch now but a little bit on mm -hmm. Facebook and stuff. Oh, like, we had a good podcast with yeah, Sean. If it yeah. was only maybe I watched it. Ago. He never even mentioned me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was watching for it to see if he said that Stuart Easton won me my first BSB race, but he never mentioned me. Uh, he knows. He knows <laughs> that. He, he doesn't have to mention it. He knows. And you know that's yeah, it. Was that Croft as well? It was good. There we go then. So yeah, local team. And it's my local, really. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And uh, we won at Croft. Um, and then we won again at Oldham. There we go. So won a couple of races. That was a good year, mm -hmm. yeah. So what's been, what's your favourite track then, out of everything, roads oh, and... Alton. Hell, Alton, straight off Alton. Yeah, I, I liked Alton, like loved it. Mm. Yeah, loved that, it. Uh, that win there that year when Shaky and did, I can't remember which way off, was it Keo knocked Shaky yeah. off? Aye. And, and uh, you won. Yeah. That was Wait, back. Aye. So you're back with Paul Bird as well after yes. uh, after that yeah. period. Yeah. That uh, this was sort of coming into the time when I'm like familiar with, because all these years up till... 2011 mm -hmm. that was before I, I i used to watch a bit of bsb mm -hmm. when i was a kid but um but like before i was in the paddock and sort of following it closely mm -hmm. so um my sort of memory is much more of like racing in when you were f on paul birds and the epm yamaha and martyr yeah. and yamaha that sort of era yeah. 
Um, so that that race at Oulton Park, uh, and what sort of year was that? Yeah, uh, that was fifteen. 15. I just remember watch like watching it on the telly and the commentary and the audience. Every, everyone went bloody mental yeah. when you won that. Yeah. Everyone was screaming you on, willing you on. It was I think a hellish, mate. Absolutely. Fifteen hellish. for the first until I got injured again. Uh, that was probably the best I ever rode, and that Mid. was that was after my injuries. Mm. You know, after the twenty eleven started off good on that Kawasaki, um, which that. The 2011 year was when um, I don't think there was anything happening with Sean because I'd never had a great 10, 2010, mm. you know, and uh, back to Nick Morgan, my old pal Nick. And, uh, but it was that was a really good setup because Paul Bird had the the world superbike Kawasaki gig. Yeah. And um, Phil Borley, the the main man at PBM. Kawasaki just wanted him to be a data guy. And I think Phil, I think this is how it worked anyway, but he, he's, you know, he, he's, he's more sort of driven than just, just doing the data. Yeah. And nothing else. He wants to try things and he wants to, you know, he wants to a bit more free Proper hand. race engineering. So he agreed to come with me to BSB at every one that never clashed, which was like nearly them all. And uh, and he had free hand then to to do with my bike and 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 that and he still did his world superbike job but having Phil um, with Paul's input you know like and then Nick's next team was nice great great job so the two together with me seemed to that was a great great year and everything got back on track there and I was um, seconds thirds fourth second again. I was second in the points before I went to the Northwest and had that crash. Yeah. So that was another year that was like on the rise again. Yeah. On the look great injury again, and that was a that was a big injury. So then we were we were like sidelined for uh, nearly a year. Bloody hell! I managed to scrape into the testing in March. The follow from May till March. Yeah. That was a long time. I was never mm. fit enough. We've, we've spoke to a few people recently yeah. about that sort of thing, about the injury and the, the rehab. Mm. Um, what was that uh, that cold ice therapy thing that uh, someone was on about? Hydro... Chiro. Yeah, sorry, chi- chirotherapy. And then there's the, the likes of like the magnet therapy and the uh, them chambers, oxygen chambers and stuff like that. Did, are, are you just a natural healer? I don't think... He's some hoik man. <laughs> yeah. I just Rubs think... <laughs> <laughs> I think if you've got a decent fitness base before your injury, you just need time. Did you do a lot of training? Time, you... isn't it? You can't. You can't. I don't think you. How can you replicate time? Yeah. How can you speed it up? You know, mm. Remember, like all the things where people who's got the bone welder and all that, and the laser treatment and that. I think. I think you need. It needs to heal, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, you need time. Do it. There's a, a little bit of is that things that, but then if you look at, for example, say when Valentino Rossi snapped his leg mm. and he was back on a bike eleven days later racing mm. that's a, top five, mm. there's so, not there's, spe- much, there's, there's something going on there that, that's not cereal, natural. Special I think, K, uh, lots and lots of cereal. <laughs> I think in GPs though they still get the injections, don't they, for pain? They've got to, haven't they? They've mm. got to. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter there how much. There must be something going on. Yeah, it might, it, I mean, they used you, they used to have them in. British Championship. Really? I've had a few of them. <laughs> yeah. I can you remember when uh, Lorenzo had that massive high side Nassen and he collarbone. He, f- and he flew back to Barcelona, got uh, got operated on, and then flew back to Assen and got on the po- I think he got on the podium as well. Like that's just like outrageous. Yeah. That's a powerful, but, um, powerful stuff. There. The episode's getting spe- called Special K now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. It's got to be that. It's very drug orientated side of it. So right, we've gone from Alton Park being your best track. What's your worst track? Snap. Snedden, mm. right. Bogey track was Snedden. <laughs> Never got on with You're it. You're not a fan of Snedden, are you? I've done it... I've done it twice. One on a track day and one of that. I did half an hour last year and I just didn't... It was, That's going to change I this year. It's going to be your favourite track after no, no, next no. weekend. It, it, it's just one of those. That, like, I went round and went, no, I'm always grateful to be out on track. I'm always grateful to mm. get the opportunity to be out racing bikes. But I remember going around there going, it was all right. Mm. Not, God, I can't I just, wait to get I back. I felt like... From turn two, three, turn three was horrendous. 
and then turn four, five, all the infield. I, yeah, that infield. Vague, inf- just vague, I, and I bit was made like, up. like, Alton's, for me, character, when you got the compressions and you can really feel the um, camber, Aye. you know, the bike, you, you can put the bike where it, it just feels like that, positive, and, mm-hmm. just feels dead positive, but Snet, all the infield just felt like vague. A bit really, artificial. But, yeah. but then did you enjoy Croft? Loved it. You see, that's it. That, that's the thing I couldn't get around. It. Like when I went to Snet, I'm like, well, it's like a flat air I'm thinking, well, so so was Croft, mm-hmm. but I enjoyed Croft. But then totally agree with you, like Cadwell, you know, Alton Park, you know, the undulations and everything. I totally agree it's with probably that. probably just Sometimes these tracks just get in your head, don't they? Ah, I suppose. I probably beat myself before I got there. Yeah. Aye, aye, that's what that's what I'm doing now. Aye. And, and towards the the back end of your career, um, so 2016 was the last year with it was EP me Yamaha. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was Tommy Hill's first go at kind of after him was, being a winning the championship and then stepping back, mm-hmm. uh, setting up that team. Uh, talk talk us through that year, like sort of how cause you'd had such a good year before with Paul Bird. Yeah, I was. I was coming off of an injury from 15 um, and then I think there was a few things like the, the, the we got Josh's bikes from the year before that, that we won the championship on so it was like the bikes the, the hardware was good but it, the bike never fitted me from the, the sort of from the word go really just the the seat to the pegs to the the way the the difference from the seating position to the pegs and everything and it was just I don't know Back I never really pig. I never really caught on to it I just thought I'll just ride the Yamaha this is how the Yamaha is and I just never really hmm. sort of I should have been more experienced enough to be like hang on a minute I need I need my pegs up and I need this I need that but maybe maybe riding for all them other teams that maybe just had it in in hand eh, for me I don't know mm-hmm. Very honest with you though, you know what I mean? Very honest with you. So that was, I never got on with it. And I think the Yamaha was a little bit different. Mm. We took a long time, it took a while, hold on, it took a while, didn't it? They did lots of things over the years with the Yamaha, didn't they? Swap it up and put it on its nose, put it on its rear, change this, change that. It took a long time. So you you and um, John Hopkins that year, teammates. What was John like as a teammate? Good, I've never really seen much of him just kept himself to himself really John he was a pleasant nice polite guy you know just just nice he always never, comes across like really easy I, going and just never never really seen that much of him mm-hmm. you know but uh, he was he was just, just nice steady guy and towards the end of that year did you kind of feel like you'd you'd sort of done everything that you'd sort of want to in your career and you were you were ready to walk think, away or I uh, yeah I think that well going back to 15 I think I had the 2011 big injuries and then came back and I've worked my way back up to 2015 riding, I think, as good as i ever done, if not better. And I was, like, um, pretty much at the sharp end, like, right right in the hunt, points-wise, strong results. Um, Wins. Yep. Yeah. Did, and, I, did you win a few races at Knock Hill that year in 2015? No. I remember you battling Second, for twice. You yeah. must, I was going to say, you must have been close because I remember Second, you were shaky there. Yeah. Yeah, it was strong. I was strong that year, mm. you know, really, really pretty, pretty good. And then halfway through the season at uh, Brands, I had a uh, no breaks at the end of the straight. And I don't know what it was, you know, I don't know what what caused it or whatever. But um, a few times. Mechanical failure. Yeah, it's Same funny thing. how it's always that corner. I, I like. There's got to be some weird. behind that because that has happened yeah. on that corner a few times. I, to, I don't know what, why, or what, but did you, it's did did you not get a head shake or no? anything. No, no. 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 But anyway, it was a jump I, off. It was a jump off. Whatever happened, mm. there'll be, there'll be so. a statistic to how many times yeah. that someone will be out there. Some some genius out there will know exactly how many times there's been a brake failure on that part of Brands. I'd, um, I wonder if there's any, has any been of a brake failures anywhere else at Brands on the circuit? There will be. Right? Lo- yeah, loads. There will be, there will have been, won't there? Like but, not, not, and, but none that like really stand out for anyone. If it, yeah. that, I know a few people that have lost brakes in a paddock. That must be scary as well. Jesus, it, wet. It drops off. Mm. But um, Never been around Brands. Watched it a million times, never been around it. Right. I've, 
I'd love to, but I've just never done it like, never done it. So I, I think maybe in hindsight and honesty, I think getting back to where I was in 2015 and, and riding good and everything. And then that, when that crashed and I broke my, um, my left ankle and my right tib. Mm. So both, both lower legs were broken. Both needed surgery, quite bad. The ankle was like unstable, broke up both sides. And the tibia was a uh, tibial plateau, like, so it like, like went in like that. And like compression. And compressions that needed like a built up in a plate and screws. And it was a couple of nasty injuries. And then maybe just, I was gutted. I was gutted because I was like, I never actually, I never ever made the showdown ever mm-hmm. in all them years, which is a bit embarrassing. No, <laughs> not it's embarrassing no, at no, all. No, not like, embarrassing at all. Just it's, for one reason or that's, another. It's, 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 it's like, with this sport, you need lady look, look on your side. And you, look at Christian Inden just like before this year. You know, yeah. he's one of the easily one of the best yeah. riders in the championship and has been for a number of years. But yeah. every year he he got injured at the wrong time, missed a couple of races, came back from injury, and then was seventh of things. And you know. Yeah. The, it's a, it's a bloody tough sport, uh, isn't it? So with that, when I was like strong in the points, like good third, fourth, whatever I was, but strong. And I thought this year we're, this I only had a few three rounds to go and I was right strong points wise. And uh, and I thought this, we're, we're in this year. And then, and then that, I was that. And I missed it by three points. You're joking. Missing three rounds. Lin, Linny, Linny uh, oh. scraped in. By three points. A bit mad. Tried to ride it, Ulton. We're like, no legs. Like, like. Just couldn't load back. Couldn't put any in that. And I went into Cascades, just barreled in, just a passenger and lost the front. You're joking. <laughs> crashed. Tried to ride to get a couple of points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was stupid. And so from that, from that last year of, of BSB, we, you know, from all the injuries and stuff you were I think I just that bothered me more than the big one yeah I was just like like what I thought like oh I've had this huge big accident and I've managed to to get away with it I was like lightning will never strike twice that sort of thing and then to have like 100 odd miles an hour no brakes jump off and break my legs quite bad I thought oh mm-hmm. I thought maybe maybe subconsciously it just it ticked for you and just went dive of I. And what about you? Your pure road race and what was the last uh, road race road that race, you, yeah. you did? I rode Macau at the end of sixteen, right? And uh, oh, yeah, and that was when I knew I was finished. You've had you've had done. your fo- I had your phone and you, uh, you were doing. Why so, I was done? Why why was that? Sorry. I was just like when I've set the lap record or whatever. You just buzz in. How like you're just I'm winning. I'm getting the first place trophy, I'm getting all the get the checks in my pocket uh, to show me that. I'm I doing know. it. I'm I, and I was winning no matter what. And and then from like that to to riding sixth or seventh or whatever and I was literally near enough scared. <laughs> see, for, no, see, for you, like racing mm. bikes, you want to be competitive. It's not just riding bikes for you, and that's fair uh, enough. That's yeah. fair enough. You know, that's a perfect way of describing mm. it. Really, it's like it, you get your enjoyment about being competitive. It's mm. not just being on a bike, and that yeah. is the amount of people that will respect that, and I respect that, and so does Chrissy. You know, it's yeah. that's a hellish thing, mate. It really and is. I would never want to ride and be whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you want to you want to push at the front. Mm. And, no, that's good, mate. That is. I'm just getting up the, we have a Patreon page. It's like social media for like our fans of the podcast. Uh, just before that f- uh, Patreon page, I was just going to ask, uh, do you know, for example, if your son started Tomac Race and was, you know, getting on and enjoying it, and he said, uh, Dad, I, I would like to go and do the, the Northwest and Macau, and, like maybe the TT. What, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll catch you in the anchor bar, son, get the laps in. <laughs> yeah, well, have you, have you sort of thought of down that route? And uh, like, yeah. I would try and, I would try and, uh, steer him away, right? Right. Aye, because I've I've had tires delaminate. I've had you've seen the dark side of the sport. Me, yes, I've aye. done all, and I was like amazingly lucky to to get through the other side. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, 
nah, I would I would try. But if he said, I am, I'm doing this. I'm dedicated to it, and I really want it, and I'm and I I'm desperate. How could you stop? Yeah, that. No, I'd have to. His mum might. <laughs> ah, his, his mother, ah, his mother might say got, uh, The last podcast that, sorry, the, it was two two podcasts ago, episode 99, we had Jenny Tinmouth on and we had a right laugh at the start of that podcast because uh, we went to the toilet before um, before the, the podcast. All around the whole workshop, <laughs> it's just trophies and pictures of Jenny and our world book of records and then went, went for a quick wee before the podcast and just got a massive poster of you up just above the toilet. No one else in the, <laughs> no one else yeah. in the toilet, and just you, mate. And we were saying, we're like, wow, what Stuart done wrong for, for that and she was laughing and <laughs> the reason was because the colour of the, the it's like an orangey and it had you and she's clearly a big fan of yours it was nothing like bad uh-huh. but someone said uh, like... so we've got uh, Julian Rose one of our patrons said how how does he feel about being Jenny Tinmouth's pinup boy and I think that's what <laughs> that refers to you're honoured mate we've got uh, we've got Tracy Dudley if you could race one more time where would it be oh that's a cracking question Probably Croft. Croft on what bike? The Honda. That there we Honda. Are. The Honda. And we've got yeah. Mike Orton, great guest. Uh, what was it like being mentored by Hizzy, which we've talked about? As he's from even even further north than you two, does that make you guys southerners? What was it, it like? Him, I. <laughs> what was it like getting started racing with less track choice? And how did he get started? Which we've talked about. How did he end up on the roads? We've talked about that. Is there a connection with Keith and Moore? No, no, no. Uh, we mate, not mates with them or anything. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Good mates. Mil- um, well, Keith was a motocrosser. Um, good. Yeah, good. Yep, Scottish champion. Right. Yep. Keith was. Uh, There's no hope for me because everyone uh, we're talking about was a good motocross rider, so I'm screwed, aren't I? So there you go. I, I never. <laughs> Keith's a bit older than me, so I never really. I, I just. I knew him um, when he started road racing. Aye. You know, and and an ex motocrosser. Aye. Scottish, so we just kind of met him did it like that, and then um, he's he's mad as a box of frogs, isn't he? Bloody brilliant, bloody brilliant! I tell you what, I think my last question for me anyway is like, what's been your favourite moment? Your one favourite moment that stands out? It doesn't even have to be on the like you know off the track on the track. Anchor bar, the anchor bar is a very mm. intoxicating place. If Could you're gonna, be there. if you're gonna picture one moment, have it like the top of the stairs and a big canvas from your racing days. Um, the, my second Super Sport Championship with Martrip. We never even spoke about them, mm. and they were a great team to ride yeah. for. They're, they're coming back this uh, year. Yeah, I know. With uh, uh, young, um, when we went through the years, we missed. The thirteen super sport year where um he'll be raging. Tim will be like No no, we're, we're, talking, about, no, no, we're talking about him now. That's uh, your see, highlight that's, moment. That's, that's, that's so like, it is that, it is that, that, cause that was like a um the first super sport title came quite not quite easily, quite aye. naturally. You know, never the set after all the kind of injuries, tough years. Defending blah, 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 yeah. And and it this, with the year with Martin, it was a good bike, good team, um, and it was a tough year with Seely. Seely's a blooming little <laughs> terrier. You know, he was a he's a he's a hard. He's a he's a racer. He's, he's a, a scrapper, a, isn't he? Ah, is he? Do you have a good relationship uh, with Seely off the track? No, yeah, not that, the time. No. Oh, all right. <laughs> that year, we never really said a lot. That's never uh, really said a lot, but he's quite. That's just how Alistair operates. He's yes, quite. I. Head he's, down he's, he is. He's he's quite um, he's quite hard. Means business. Aye. My and, God. Uh, so, but fair play to him when when I managed to come out on top. He shook. He had a beer. Good after man. Him, and it was good. good. I'm just trying to think. Was that was that when the triumphs were still quite? There was quite a big yeah. triumph teams. Is Smiths yeah. and you. Glenn Richards and. Billy McConnell mm. a, on the triumphs. For me, those those year. were glory days for mm. for British Super sport. Right. But, um, yeah. So, uh, that was a, a a great fun year with with another good team. They we were, expect to see that canvas, and you should go drop it off at, J- at Jenny Tim's place. <laughs> yeah. Put it in the bog. There they are. That's right. a proper picture. There you go. Without a doubt. Yeah. That's uh, that was mid. that was probably. There's loads of good memories. Like, yeah, it might even just be, just a lap time that you. That, oh God, I... that you maybe never thought you could get and, it, and you like see a lap time and you're like wow mm-hmm. yes that was a good one mm-hmm. there we are mm. and um, 
I've lost my train of thought there. I can't remember what I was going to say. You're about train canvases. That's what you're by the They are. <laughs> I was, um, out of all of the... Now you're um, in the motocross paddock and uh, racing. Out of all of the, the motocross dads, who's the biggest motocross dad that you can think of? It's got to be Sugar Tits. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it because Sugar Tits has just come in. <laughs> but... Uh, I don't know, there's loads, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a lot of <laughs> well, um, yeah, Sometimes it's... when I see myself, I think, I hope nobody filmed that or seen it. That's it. <laughs> We're doing that tomorrow, so you better, <laughs> better keep it calm. Yeah. But honestly, um, I think we're going to have to wrap it up there. We could sit here all night chatting away, but you'll have to go grab a beer, get your bike ready for your son cool. tomorrow. Aye. But thank you so much for coming on, and it's been absolutely brilliant absolutely cool yeah. massive thank you to our sponsors Colchester Kawasaki all of our patrons of course and uh, is there anybody that you would like to give a special shout out to or um, you've got Tim in from um, Martyr yeah, he's got a promise tonight so we better yeah. make this quick yeah. by the way I forgot about that bit. no I'd just like to say thanks really to because it's never something that I really did you know all the guys that helped me in my in my racing days you know you need a lot of a lot of help don't you along the way and well yeah. you need you need the teams and sponsors everything you know all the guys they, they, they all know who they are so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah brilliant appreciate it spot on absolutely spot on spot right on. take care and i uh, will catch up next week cool cheers See you next. cheers mate click buy deliver with remote purchasing from the two-time motorcycle news dealer of the year colchester kawasaki proud sponsors of chasing the racing